Today we have a very special guest on our show with us who is going to help us understand how to manage social media because a lot of our viewers and parents have concerns about their kids being on Facebook or texting all the time. So if you are one of those people, we may have some answers for you. So welcome to our show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yes, Paul. You have raised a very, you're raising a very successful 15-year-old son and you seem to have uh, some control of you manage some of this. So what would you like to tell parents who are really struggling with this issue? You know, I don't know what your audience, how they interact with their children. I mean, obviously there are probably many things that they're doing to help their kids understand their place in the world, understand their environment and come to terms with the distractions that we have in life. Yes. But I can look at my son and I can say, okay, so what are, the, what are some of the things that I've done that have helped him, and you said successful, mm. I mean, as successful as any 15-year-old could be. Good marks, great kid, ask him what to help out, he helps out. How does that happen? So what's the secret? Well, I don't, I don't think kids do <laughs> what you tell them to do. If you tell your kids not to spend too much time on Facebook, they'll do the exact opposite. If you tell your kids uh, not to spend any time on the phone, they'll, they'll do the opposite. That's just the way, that's the nature of, of, of kids. What I found instead is if they don't do what you tell them, what do they do? Well, they do as you do. So if you want your kids to do uh, what you feel is the most productive thing for them, then you must set the example for that. Okay, so for parents example. need to set the example. Well, if, if, if you watch TV all the time and you don't pay any attention to your kids, your kids are going to find distractions of their own, whether that's television, video games, or social media. The fact that you're distracting yourself, they're going to do exactly the same thing. Okay. So what I found is if we create things that the family can do, where the husband and wife are interacting with their kids. Give us an example. Well, for example, I, I like boating. Okay. So do I leave my son at home when we go boating so that he can spend the entire day playing video games and talking with his friends on Facebook? No, we take him with us. Okay. We give him, we, we share in the activity of boating. Uh, I'm involved in music. I was in the music business for 25 years. Consequently, my son does as I did. He's become a very good violin player and a very good trumpet player. Okay. But I never told him, you have to play music. I never said, you must stop right now what you're doing and go practice. If you tell that to a kid, there's no way they're going to do that. They're going to do uh, only as they see you being successful at. For example, a lot of kids, their parents are stressed out with the, the way their kids act. Most what I of found, them are, yes. What, what I found is, that if the kid is stressed out, it's because the parents are stressed. Mm -hmm. And then that in turn perpetuates parents being stressed out because their kids are stressed out. So again, kids learn from example. They don't learn by what you tell them to do. For example, how do you get your kid to do something that you want them to do? Yes, that was my next question. <laughs> Give us some strategies that the parents can use for their kids because most of them want their kids to be off Facebook at least for some time, mm -hmm. right? So what are some of the strategies that you would recommend? It's very difficult to, to lure them away from Facebook. So what you would do is you would set the rules or set the goals before they get down to Facebook. So for example, a, a child gets home at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Rather than them gravitating immediately towards that, you would make an arrangement first and you would say, okay, so you've got one hour now to spend some time playing video games or s texting with your friends or spending time on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever they want to do. My son's a big YouTuber because he likes watching the, the things. Okay. But in, in addition to that, you don't just say, well, we're going to give you an hour. After that hour is done, I'm going to give you a choice of two things that I'd like you to do. Rather than just say, I want you to go clean your room, you would say, well, I'll give you a choice. You got one hour online and then you either have to do, you have to empty the dishwasher or clean your room. Which one would you like? 
Okay. And now they're not. Now it's not a choice between that or nothing. It's a choice between two things that you want them to do. Okay. So now, tell us how you have used this strategy with your own son. I, I, that's exactly what I do. Okay. okay so I, I know my son's activities. Okay. If I know, first of all, I don't have to ask him to practice. Okay. He'll he'll he has his trumpet. He'll he'll whip his trumpet out. But because the trumpet's now becoming more part of his life, yes. he's leaving the violin, which he's been playing since he's been five years old. Okay. So if I want him to play the violin, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, so it's your violin lesson is tomorrow night. And it's actually good because I moved into a neighborhood where the violin teacher's right across the street. So okay. it's, but getting him to practice, that's a whole other thing, right? So right. what I'll say is, I'll say, okay, Adrian, I understand that you're playing the trumpet and you love to play the trumpet and you're probably going to practice for three quarters of an hour or an hour. Can you take the last 15 minutes and, and pull your violin out and see if you can duplicate what you did on the trumpet with the violin? Uh -huh. So it's kind of a challenge. You, you challenge him to do something that he wouldn't normally do. So in other words, children really are not the problem. It's how the parents are dealing with them and what they see happening is is what is uh, keeping them engaged in the social media uh, circus, as people call it. Um, so anything else that you would like uh, our viewers to know about that the kids can do, or the parents can do to bring their kids or get them to do more homework? Homework is a big thing, or keeping them engaged into studies. So how, how to get that going? Well, well, first of all, you said kids are never the problem. Kids are not a problem at all. In fact, I, I love, you know, any kids from any age, they're not a problem. It's, it's the way that we as parents interact with them that causes problems. Mm -hmm. Situations, circumstances, whatever they get themselves into, it's usually a result of our direction, our leadership. So, how, social media, let's take social media for example. You have to set parameters. You have to say to them, do you realize that a lot of the things that you'll read and a lot of things that you'll see on YouTube and a lot of things that you'll hear on these various social media channels, you have to, they're going to listen to those things and because they're in print or because they're perpetuated and, and popular, mm -hmm. they're going to start to believe those things. But one thing is for certain. Between the ages of zero to seven, we call that the imprint period. That's when kids take who's ever closest to them uh, as the truth. They don't have any psychological filtering. They can't, if, if, for this example, you, I never told my son that, that money was hard to come by. I'm, I'm a successful business person. I was successful in the music business. And I never said, we have to struggle to get ahead. I never said that money's hard to come by. I never said that you know, poverty was, gets you closer to God. I never said anything like that. I just said uh, money comes to us easily and effortlessly. So that became his belief system because between the ages of zero and seven, if, if, if I helped him see that it was easy to come by, then that was his belief. So now he believes that. Whereas mm -hmm. every other parents would say, you know, that's too expensive. You can't have that. Instead of getting you the higher priced jeans, we're going to get the ones on sale. Um, I, that's how I was dealt with when I was a kid. And I believed for many, many years, for example, that, that you had to struggle and mm. you had to work hard mm. and you had to study hard and you had to do everything that was hard. And what I've realized later in life, and of course not, not as early as I wanted to, what I realized is that's not true at all. Mm. In fact, that was my belief system. So parents have a responsibility to make sure that they give the right information from the very beginning because that's what is going to form the character and how they see life and, and, and perspective. Well, listen, I mean, you talk about right information. What is right and what is wrong? I personally don't believe either one because, you know, there's a lot of people, they'll tell you, you know, they just want to be right. But that doesn't necessarily mean they have what they want. In fact, people that are right with me, I usually say, where's your proof? Where's your results? And there's real world results, and then there's people who hear about things, talk about things, read about things, and then form opinions about things. Mm. Well, if you've heard about it, talked about it, and read about it, and you formed an opinion about it, that doesn't mean you know it. That just means you've got an opinion based on things that you've talked about and read about. Where are the results? Okay. And so it's about producing real world results. We all have human desires. We all want things. Mm -hmm. How do we create them?
Okay. And so my perspective on the thing is whether it's right or whether it's wrong, where are the results? And there's nothing like your current results to tell you how your system and your belief system is working. Yeah, because you can't fight that because the proof is there, right? So that, that's a good way of looking at things. Anything else that you would like to, because the major concern of parents is uh, the kids are not paying that much attention to studies or school and all that stuff. So that struggle between them getting to uh, spend time on their homework or assignments as opposed to being on Facebook or Twitter or whatever else that, that they may be doing. Social media is an outlet for them to express themselves. Ah, they're going okay. to be influenced by people on social media, okay. but before they're influenced by others, they're going to be influenced by the parents first. Okay. Whatever the parents' belief systems are, that will influence them more than what some stranger or some friend says on Facebook. Yeah, because they trust the parents. Well, they, they trust them, but where's the interaction, right? Where's their level of trust that they've built between each other? See, my son would prefer to spend the, the day with me on a boat than hang out with his friends. Because that's, that is cool. Because it's, that's the relationship that we've yes. built. And we'll practice together. I'll play the piano, he'll play the trumpet. I mean, we've okay. created those activities All together. Right. I'm not saying I'm, uh, nothing, I'm not saying that I'm the world's greatest father or, or anything like that. What I am saying is, is that if the, if the child is heavily influenced by negative activity online, yes. it's because there's an equal amount of negative feeling in the family environment. Mm -hmm. So they escape from all of that to this world. So they move out from one negative environment right into another one because okay. what you believe, if you believe that, for example, I got the opportunity to speak at my son's school a few years ago. He okay. was a bit younger at the time. Okay. And I had 1,500 kids in the room and uh, the, one of the, I always ask a lot of questions because, of course, when you ask questions, it kind of hooks the mind, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, if you ask a, a room full of kids, 1,500 kids, a question, every hand goes up, right? So right. Uh, here's the question I asked. I said, what's the number one reason why people don't get what they want in life? And every hand went up, and I said, okay, so I guess I got to pick the kid that has his, you know, he's jumping up and down, right? All so right. I picked this kid halfway back in the audience. Everybody else was, you know, sat down, and they're sitting on the floor. And I said, okay, son, what is the number one reason why ki people don't get what they want in life? And he says, because life sucks. No. Oh. So he didn't learn that on his own. He learned that from the people and the influences that were closest to him. Yes. If the father comes home every night and says that my job sucks, life sucks. If the mother comes home every night and said, oh, life is hard and it's a struggle and everything, that's what the child believes. Okay. And from my perspective, if you walk your talk and you're successful and you're happy and you're well adjusted, so will the kids be. You can't tell them to be any different than you are. All Would right. you agree with what I'm saying? Absolutely, yes. Lead by example and they will gravitate towards you and you should make it fun from what I'm hearing from you is that if a, if a parent is fun to be with, then the kids will automatically spend time with the parents like so thank you so much you're welcome thank you yes and uh, if you have any other questions about this and you would like further information please contact us and we'll make sure you get the right information